uh, well, first off, thanks again very much for attending the AFS User Conference. Um, it's been a great, exciting couple of days. I know these for me. My feet will tough can attest to that as well. So <clears throat> the session today is specifically post-event analysis lessons from the rearview mirror uh, using the past performance data and help you kind of get a map, uh, a map of mass or road to success. It's a mouthful right there. Uh, so kind of long thing. It's not version specific, so it's really lessons for the trade marketing group. Uh, again, my name is Joel Cartwright. I have been in consumer packages for about 20 years uh, in different finance, accounting, and sales operations roles. Uh, I started my uh, life in CPG at Sarah Lee Foods, part of the consolidation of the meat group back, way back when, and then went to Sunny Delight and started a company after we acquired it from Procter & Gamble. And then Kimberly Clark, uh, where I managed the Kroger team, the finances there, uh, same course at Kimberly Clark as we cover every orifice of the body. Uh, and then, <laughs> I have a few wonderful stories there, but I won't go um, At which point I made a, a transition to the dark side, which is uh, software. Uh, and I've done service support, solution engineering. I did a short stint at Demand Tech and came back, because like a bad penny, I came back to AFS Technologies from the UI. With me today is my father, Glenn Carlson. Who's <laughs> <laughs> family business. It's a family business. Glenn, just give us a little background. So um, I have spent my entire uh, career on the CP side of the business. Actually started with the uh, supermarket chain in the Northeast, Path Park. Have you ever known Path Park? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Supermarkets general. It's the life of people, right? It took me 10 years after leaving Path Park to finally get that word out of utilizing it in everyday conversation. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, <laughs> I'm from that uh, So then I, I did work at the with Midway after I uh, was in Path Park. Uh, uh, last role was in kind of management, and then I've been on this side of this for about 10 years uh, with different companies. You know, I actually worked together uh, at, uh, at Command Tech. Uh, and before MBI was acquired by AFS, I worked uh, on the uh, team that delivered or broke the U.S. market uh, with the MEI TPM application. So um, I've, been, uh, I've been here with AFS almost uh, coming up on a year or so, um, and actually delighted to be in front of you and working with a, a very good friend of mine. Thanks, Len. So the agenda, what we want to do is really the truth about post-event analysis. Um, really, the key components of that are defining your success parameters, uh, evaluation metrics, uh, understanding what your revol result metrics are, and event analysis. And typically what I find, having talked to a lot of customers out there with regards to post analysis, it's always number one on their RFPs when they're looking for a solution. How can they do better post event analysis? And it always goes down the path of consumption data. I need consumption data to do post event analysis. Well, uh, I don't buy consumption data for just about everybody. So we need to utilize more of the shipment data and expect to model it. Then the next component is, Customers ask me, well, what's the best way to anal analyze my events? So they need to develop some internal metrics to get there. So really the objective here is to de help better define your success parameters for post-promotion activity. Understand the best way for your organization to determine the base volume, which is the key metric to begin your analysis for ROI and lift, be it for a non-consumption data reporting customer. So essentially the customers you buy data for, how can I get the consumer or an, R, an ROI analysis for a post event. And again, as I mentioned, how base volume is the key analytical point. And as well, understanding the true incremental volume and its impact, volume versus demand. And then finally, understand how merchandising events can impact promotions uh, and volume. So what I first like to do is, is, I know this might be kind of old hat for a lot of you, but just to make sure everybody's on the same page, post event analysis you need a starting point, and that becomes base volume. So we need to determine what base volume is. And my experience is this is transferred uh, across different organizations. Different people look at what base volume is compared to somebody else. Some include an EDLP within their base volume. So really, as an organization, you have to come to understanding what your base volume is. And you want to, the first up way to do this with consumption data is let the shopper behavior determine what your base volume is. So let the shoppers determine what your base volume is. So let Nielsen tell you what your base volume is. Now, regardless of what application uh, you're on, you can, of course, get the base volume out of that solution from prior to your history, just to find the parameters. Again, it goes back to, 
I need to establish what baseline is. But what POS data will do, it'll define the sale in base versus incremental. Sometimes people talk to it as deal and not only. And again, the, the, the main drawback of that, it's not available for all planned accounts or it's just plain too costly. So I definitely want to do that. We want to define the success parameters, and this is the biggest component um, within post-event analysis as well, as well as my, my price points, but I want to understand my merchandising activity and how all that rolls out into a net unit cost. The one thing I've learned in many years in finance in CPG, uh, and bosses have told me, Joel, I need to get it down to one number. I need to get it down to one number, and that number is typically net unit cost. And the net unit cost is net of trade, and understanding my merchandising events and the activity from a pricing standpoint. So <clears throat> what you want to understand is your PO events and then how they impact the base volume and being able to measure incremental events. So when I run that feature display, is it driving folks down the aisle? Now, there's also another way to look at post-event analysis, not only from a success of the promotion itself, but from a compliance standpoint. I don't know if everybody has anybody gone down this road, but you know when you go meet with the Kroger buyer, he agrees to 299 in a full feature and display, but do you get that execution? So typically what I recommend to folks is not necessarily maybe looking at merchandising event analysis right off the bat, maybe go into it from the perspective of a compliance standpoint. I went in, at the Kroger, I agreed to a 15-week feature and display at this price, but it wasn't in the full execution of the stores. So what was that level? Again, you want to make sure that the data volume aligns the incremental volume to the event execution. Um, the only drawback with analyzing consumption data from point of sale, or uh, emergency event from point of sale data, you don't know if it comes off the rack or if it comes off the shelf. So it's, it's difficult to really manage the incremental volume from emergency event. Pricing. I mean, how many people spend days on understanding what's my price point? What's my out shelf price point? and my TPR, what do I need to run out? Again, that gets into the discussion of price elasticity, what's my price threshold, and understanding that. Price pointer, what is my shelf price for typical volume movement? Within the tools, <coughs> in any TPM tool without consumption data, you can see from a graph standpoint your price point shelf and what will drive volume. Very typically done that way. Again, as I mentioned, the pricing mesh, uh, threshold and understanding what that price point so the key metrics, volume, merchandising, and pricing is what you would want to understand from the analysis standpoint. Getting more in detail from the analysis metrics regarding volume, again, baseline. What's the normal expected volume of product in the absence of any store level promotion? So from my, in my TPM tool, if I don't get consumption data, I can certainly run the historical report to get an understanding of, okay, show me all my volume that was not on deal, but I want to pull in an EDLP performance type so I can better understand that. Again, baseline can be sourced from IRM Nielsen. So the key takeaway is you basically get two ways you get it. You get it from Nielsen, or you're going to get it from your TPM solution, isolating specific performance effort, or promotion performances that you would want to define in your parameters. From which point, there's two ways to look at incremental. Typically in the TPM tool without consumption data, your base volume starts as your set volume for analytics. So what I mean by that, I set my base volume in week one, that's base volume, but I sell 2,000 cases in week one. 1,000 now becomes incremental. That's the best way to look at it. Um, I would defy anybody to give me a better solution to do that. That's the best way to look at it. So then, the, or you can have the consumption data. So again, it's incremental volume is your actuals versus your base volume. That's why it's so important to make sure that your base volume is uh, is accurate. Is it going to be 100% accurate? Probably not. But as long as the organization agrees upon it, this is what I'm going to analyze my activity for, then directionally it's going to be absolutely correct. <clears throat> then understanding my analytical measures regarding volume metrics. This is accounting one-on-one, -on -one, my percent ROI. Gain on investment minus my cost of investment, divided by the cost of investment. So this is where it's very important to make sure that your contribution information is within the tool and your COGS information is within the tool. A lot of folks who I've talked to, I've implemented, I've sold to, um, ah, I'll well, put my COGS data in there. You're just not fully totally getting the utilization out of the application that you really need. So it's important to get the most up-to-date COGS information within the tool. Understanding my percent lift, either from a dollar standpoint or as a percentage. 
Always the question to me is, what's the right number? I can calculate a percentage. What's the dollar figure? I typically talk ROI percent, or excuse me, lift as a percentage. You know, 125 percent, 135 percent. Uh, if I talk dollars, and I've worked in CPG companies that talk it both ways, so as a percentage or as a dollar. Spent my RO or my lift is 1.25. I spent a dollar, I should get a dollar 25 back in increment of water. That's the way to think about it as well. The key takeaway as an organization, you need to decide what are the key metrics, how am I going to measure going forward. There is no right or wrong. It's again your cultural understanding of how you want to analyze. Merchandising conditions. Within your TPM tool, you have your merchandising conditions. Feature, display, feature and display, and your temporary price reductions. You want to encompass all that spending, again, into one number, net unit cost. Because <clears throat> I want to be able to understand, I've got all these activities running once. Feature only, feature and display, a display only. And those are overlapping. I need to be able to segment between the two. Because from that, I need to understand my percentage of volume. Percent of the retail volume solely in conjunction with the trade merchandising activity. Now, this is where consumption data becomes very important because then I can align a feature activity and see what volume I got from that. So the percentage of volume. Then the first thing you learn in day one when you start to work for a CPG company is understanding what the percent ACV level. Understanding what that the measures really mean. What is my support level at show? And they want to encompass the percentage ACV bills that participate in the trade merchandising activity. So let's take a step back. Compliance. First thing when I would do a post event analysis, I looked at, all right, I'm looking at my ACV level. Why is it so bad? I'm in all the stores. Am I really? Let's go back and take the execution information to make sure that I did get full compliance in my activity. So that's the first place I would look. It's not maybe necessarily that the, the promotion didn't perform well, it just was poorly executed. Next thing I'm doing, I'm calling my buyer and saying, I'm not running this again until I get full compliance. Pricing. Again, we talked about this. The retail pricing information is coming from multiple sources. We would want to gauge the validity of that store, uh, the, the pricing information. But basically, the retail price is coming from the tapes. They're getting the, from the marketing reps, the retail execution, what's the right price in store, as well as compliance on the displays and the feature in the app. Price data is typically gathered separately from store mover data. So if, if feature prices find are lower than the tape prices, well, then there's probably overrides and things like that that you're going to have to encounter as well. Again, I'm going to go back and review my compliance information. Again, it's getting it down to one number. The one thing I always learned to get on the finance side, I need to understand my price per unit. I look at price per unit from a trade standpoint. How much am I spending at $1.25 or what did we get? It's my price, package price per unit for those scan sales and applying that same thought process from the shipping standpoint. Price per equivalent unit. I don't know how many of you had to deal in equivalent volumes that I had to. Uh, when I sold gallon juice, I sold gallon juice in a gallon open stock case. I sold gallon juice on a full pallet and I sold gallon juice on a full mixed pallet. I need to understand what my gallon juice equivalent price is. So being able to calculate what that is and break down the prices. A good TPM tool will do that. Of course, ours do that. The one drawback when you're, when you're talking pricing is understanding the average price. Now, this is confusing to a lot of folks who I talk to who utilize our tools. Average price is taking all the merchandising activity as well as your pricing activity and encompassing my average price. So it may kind of go up and down. So when you're looking at it, it's a weighted price for all the scan scale of the product, you know, anything you've done, units sold in the store. So understanding what that is, a weighted price. Non-promoter price, that's my everyday price at shelf. That's what I'm comparing my, my TPRs against and what movement I'm getting based upon that price. It's my price elasticity and understanding what that is. So I'm going to turn it over to Glenn and take you through the next slides. Thank you. Uh, we're looking at some information here, and uh, what Joel has kind of laid out is his foundation for what some of those metrics that we're, that we're subsequently going to use and some of the things that we're looking at. However, when you think about the way to do post-event, we talk about post-event analysis, post-event analysis can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. Okay? 
you might be embarking upon something today and say, oh yeah, we're doing we're doing postmortems on all of our you know, all of our events. Okay, to what level and to what degree? And as Dalton said, you can kind of have a, an understanding or provide some knowledge with regard to some of the things that you need to capture. But what I wanted to kind of talk about, and, and the heading is up here, is it is a event analysis and totality. That a lot of times when you're embarking upon this and you're looking at individual events, it's really, really hard because of when shipments occur, when scan occurs, cutoff dates, like right? so. Looking at one subsequent individual event can be very, very hard to determine whether it's successful or not. When I talk about events in totality, event analysis in totality, I'm talking about looking at over a long period of time, or over a long period of time. Here's an example with regard to a retailer that I did some analysis for, where um, they had moved their promoted price point from three for 10 every day to three for 12 every day, and they had eight opportunities per year at two weeks each. This is what I want to understand. So I'm saying, not necessarily the one individual event, but the entire plan. Sometimes that gets lost. And when I and the, the reason that we're going to we're taking a look at this, and, and, and the reason that I wanted to kind of talk about this is that it is really, really difficult sometimes to get to that very, very finite event. But when you look at things, of course, a bigger period of time, it's a great starting point because then, at least, when I'm talking about, as Joel had said, is like, hey, directionally. Anytime you can expand that, look at it from the standpoint of a given product over a given period of time. For example, in this case, uh, this was for a 26 week, 26, for 52 week period of time. 2003 actuals, what we actually did, and then compare those variances and then be able to drive what the trade for case kind of looked like, what the evaluation was and saying, are we moving in the right direction? So it's like, here we have goals, goal is to decrease, for example, not maybe the trade over world dollars, but when the trade as the trade applies to, as we look at it on a trade rate per case, I can sometimes wrap my arms around those numbers a lot easier than I can an individual event versus looking at it in totality. Does it kind of help make some sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, at least for with regard to when you're starting, you're saying, oh, well, post event. Don't, we don't get hung up on the moniker of event being maybe one individual event. The event being, it's like, yes, it was an entire plan that we put in place for a Kroger. Or in this case, when I was looking at these, these logos and mega ads, um, I can't tell you who the retailer was, but this was actually, um, this was actually the shopper. So we know ShopRite, like my good friends at Pathmark, God rest their souls. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a little difficult to deal with. However, when we start to look at things in totality, it's like you might go under water on some individual events, but I have to, I have to make it up maybe with my everyday business. This is kind of a way when we start to look at things in totality, be able to understand the metrics and what is important to you. Um, might be a little difficult to see. I'll go back where you guys are. Well, that's pretty pale. <coughs> um, do you guys do this with either syndicated data or with your own weekly uh, information? We used to call them the we used to call them the bump charts, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, and as Joel was alluding to, uh, with regard to the syndicate uh, or looking at base, this this little darker orange line is where the base was, and there's my spikes. This was really really effective with regard to at least putting in front of um, individuals to say, what did we do? What did we do at ShopRite over the past year? Like, so I can take a look at my volume, I can see my base, my base, my incremental, what was my average price? Because again, Joel was, you know, again, these are important metrics. What was my price when I'm not on sale? What was my price when I went on sale? Can I actually see what those spikes are? And then do some very, very rudimentary analysis with regard to those individual promotions, at least from the standpoint of the data that we know. And as Joel had said, it's like, you know, it's not perfect, but you have to start somewhere. And if you start, by looking at it in totality like this, at least giving somebody a picture for what's happening, then you look at the previous screen, I roll the whole thing up and I start to analyze and look at the metrics that are important, we can start to make some better decisions. So information that's here is like, I took the opportunity to kind of break out some of these, break out some of these individual um, uh, promotions that you see, look at the price point, look at the volume, look at the trade dollars, and again, you can break that down to Price. I can look at my volume, I can look at my margin percent, 
but then also understanding what are really the important metrics, because again, Mr. Cartwright had said, like thinking about that cost of goods information so we can really look at a true profitability. What was my case cost? What was my allowance? My net case cost? Factor in others to get to these key metrics. Post event analysis or any analysis that has to do with either an individual promotion or in totality, it's very important that you not just, not the analysis itself, what you're driving towards. What are the metrics that we're looking to uh, improve? Is it rate per case? If it's rate per case, then we can say it's rate per case. What do we want to do with rate per case? You know what a good starting point is? Let's get it lower. That's a mantra that has been used at many companies that we work with. We want it to improve. We want rate per case to go down. How much is irrelevant? We ran promotions at ShopRite when I was with Ben Pay. We lost money every single year to the tune of about $450,000 because we have to be in the orange juice category. We couldn't get it to zero in one year. We said, let's lose less than $450,000. Let's shoot for 300. There'll be a huge improvement. <coughs> Is it zero? No. Will the guy from Kroger come in and say, I'm making millions, but you're not dealing with them? <laughs> <laughs> so improvement is a good thing, but you got to look at what you're, you have to be measuring something. You've got to be looking to improve something. Typically, at, uh, and again, globalizations, things like rate per case or uh, cost per net unit are important to either improve them, look at driving trade down to some level, looking to actually be even keeping volume stable, but actually lowering trade, or maybe actually increasing and increasing, as long as we're looking at that metric that is important to drive us towards um, improving our business. Here was something that, and, and, and again, it goes a little bit beyond now what uh, we look at post-event analysis, but when we start to talk about what the improvements, if we are able to garner improvements from some of these changes, looking at some of these metrics, actually making improvements, what can we do, see, what can we do in terms of assuming some benefits related to sales, retailer, category, etc., with a margin? This is my example, it was with Chocolate, but subsequently, my total investment here, my net benefit of actually doing that can be improved over the course of time so that when we start to look at not just one retailer, but numer numerous retailers across numerous PPGs, we can see that it's extremely significant. This was an analysis that I did for a customer that we worked with uh, for ShopRite to show an executive management team was like why we needed to actually improve why we need to actually focus on our ROI, why we need to actually improve our rate per case spending, even if we spent more on rate per case, it might have been less, so that we can make investments into the future okay, for our business. And we'll finish kind of with, I think we got some just uh, closing thoughts here. If you're going to do this, or if you embark upon this, and as Joel had said, we kind of have a foundation for some of the facts that we need to look at and some of the measures and the metrics that we need to look at where we want to be, when we want to make improvements. It's like, look at a specific retailer. Work with a retailer to tailor that strategy that achieves mutual benefits. I don't recommend anybody in the Northeast. <laughs> maybe slip a little bit further south down to maybe Publix. Publix is a good one. They love to do funky things with buy one, get ones. So, but achieving something that is mutually beneficial. You can't expect to pull the carpet from underneath the retailer and then be happy about it. But they also know that you're in business to do business. So it's like they, things have to be mutually beneficial. Don't deviate, okay? And this is an example that we have. It's like when you put together that strategy, and again, I have an example, examples here of what we wanted to do, we actually made a, prescript, uh, uh, a prescriptive uh, strategy or prescribe the strategy to them and said that we're going, to, we're going to hold the course over an entire period of time, whether it be six months or an entire year, to see how we can prove this out. We're not going to let ourselves get caught up in maybe one individual promotion because anything can happen with one individual promotion. Right? So we're looking at longer periods of time. And allow the retailer to give you input. All right? These things really, really work when the retailer understands that you're as invested in their business as they are. 
and they do want to work towards solutions. If you're looking at entire plants, like I had said, the reason that I started out this uh, when, I, when I was talking about this in totality is because you can't cope with a retail or one individual promotion a lot of times. There's got to be give or take. I got to give you this one, but I need this. And it balances out. Not with Northeast retail. Yeah, I guess you so. say. But also in the country, you can do these types of things. So with that, as I, you know, I think Joe and I would like to, you know, cut that into your time. We'll look to take any questions. But the idea is establish that framework. Look to establish the metrics that you need to improve. Put a fundamental <coughs> plan in place. Work with a single retailer to actually get this started, so that you can make making market improvements to invest not only with that retailer but with other retailers to prove this out. Any questions? Thank you all very much. Travel safe.